Hey, this is Ryan from Simple Lab. So many of you already know there was a train derailment a couple of weeks ago in East Palestine, Ohio, that caused a chemical spill and has many people worried about water quality in the region. Uh, at Simple Lab, we've been fielding a lot of questions about this and doing a little bit of data analysis as uh, the data comes in. There are two main water quality concerns. There's concerns about the groundwater in the immediate vicinity of the accident as well as concerns about a plume of contaminant that's making its way down the Ohio River as we speak. So I wanted to share a quick peek at a little bit of the work we've been doing, uh, show you where that contaminant plume is flowing, which utilities might be affected, and uh, what insights we've heard from the news and from our analysis about this. So first we wanted to get an idea of which utilities might be affected by these surface water impacts. Uh, I pulled this up into QGIS, starting here at East Palestine at the site of the derailment. From there, we can trace it down Sulphur Run and Leslie Run, which we know from the news were both heavily impacted by the spill. Leslie Run, as you zoom out, flows into Beaver Creek here, which eventually flows into the Ohio River. And if you zoom way out, the Ohio River eventually flows into the Mississippi and out into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, it's worth noting that we think that this contaminant is going to be extremely diluted as it moves downstream and that the effects will be very low. So to try to identify which utilities may be affected, first I shortened up the line a little bit, really focusing on just the Ohio River because of that expectation of dilution downstream. From there, I drew a little buffer around it to capture utilities in the immediate vicinity, and I overlaid this with a map of all of the utilities in the US. There are 55,000 of them, and this map didn't exist until Simple Lab published it a few months ago. So once these are overlaid, we can do an intersection and find that here are some candidate utilities along the river that may be pulling from the water. But furthermore, we also know uh, some utilities are pulling from groundwater and others are pulling from surface water. So we can filter based on that and narrow down to this visual of roughly 80 utilities that are likely to be pulling from uh, potentially contaminated waters. I started to do some spot checking and sure enough a number of these utilities are in the news talking about what kinds of mitigative efforts they are taking. Um, several of them are closing off their intake if they have an alternate source as the contaminant plume makes its way down the Ohio River. Uh, many of them are increasing the amount of testing that they're doing. Uh, and it's worth saying that the tests that we're seeing so far are all registering very low. Some are registering some contaminant like butyl acrylate, but at levels well below any health concern. Also, these treatment plants have existing technology in place, like activated carbon, that can remove the uh, contaminant. And so the belief is that uh, the risk is very low to human health. But we're going to be monitoring the data. The next thing we'll be doing is taking this list of utilities, joining it to our list of public water quality data from all of these utilities, and using that to establish a baseline. From there, we'll be able to monitor into the future and determine if there have been any kinds of shifts in water quality uh, as a result of this spill. So stay tuned, we'll make sure to keep you updated with anything interesting that we find.